Welcome back. I'm Bushra and today we'll explore CodeSubJS. CodeSubJS is a supercharged end-to-end -end testing framework for Node.js. CodeSubJS works as a wrapper over your Node.js testing library like Playwright, Puppeteer, WebDriver, Protractor and so on. So these are some of the amazing features of CodeSubJS. It is scenario driven, driver agnostic, that is, you can use it with Playwright, WebDriver, Puppeteer, and so on. By default, CodeSubJS uses Playwright. It provides us with an interactive debug. That is, you can pause the test and run commands in console to see if they are correct. Rich locators. Encourages use of page object model. Allows testing, both web and mobile apps. Follows a Cucumber-like style creates beautiful HTML reports, data management, you can perform parallel testing, tests are less flaky as it automatically retries when a step fails, and you can do multi-session testing, that is test in multiple browser windows. So you see, these are some of the most sought after features of a test framework. CodeSubJS is loaded with amazing features, CodeSubJS helps in building a framework that follows best practices, is stable and maintainable. So let's go ahead and create a CodeSubJS project. Now let's install CodeSubJS and Playwright. Okay, so we have CodeSubJS and Playwright installed. Now we need to run this command. npx codesubjs in it. So it says welcome to codesubjs initialization tool. It will prepare and configure a test environment for you. All right. So it's asking where we would like our test files to be placed. Let's go ahead with the default. So I just hit enter and then the helper you would like to use. So you can select any from this list. Let's go with Playwright. Now it's asking where the logs and screenshots and reports should be placed. Let's hit enter. Language should be English. And it needs a base URL. So we'll be working with to do MVC app. Show browser, yes. Okay, so uh, it will set Chromium as the default browser or you can pick any. Let's go with the default feature we would be testing is to do. This will be the name of our file. All right. And look. So it has created some files here. In case you would like to change any configuration, then you can update it in codesubjs.conf.js. So look, this is the URL we set the browser and so on okay and to do test.js is our test file so here feature can be thought of as describe method in jest and scenario as test method the i object is an actor an abstraction for uh, a testing user so let's go ahead and add a test here so let's read it line by line i'm on this page now, because we have this URL set in our codesubjs.config file, we can remove this and it will navigate to the same page. Then uh, I don't see any element with class to do count. That is, we do not see any element in the list. I fill field what needs to be done with text task one. So here we are entering text task one. I press enter key so task one gets added to the list now I see element with text task one 
and class to do list. This is making sure that task 1 is in the list. I click on input element with class toggle. This will mark the task 1 as completed. So you see it is so neat and so easy to understand. Let's run this. So it was really quick, but our test passed. So these are the most commonly used actions. We have used most of them. Okay. So now let's see interactive pause. Let me add the pause method at the end of our script. So now when I run this script, this pause method will pause our execution and give full control of the browser to the terminal. And so we can run different commands from the terminal. Let's run this and see. So now because of the pause method, the execution has been halted. Now here in the terminal, we can run any command. Say I would like to check that I don't see one item left text. Okay, because we have marked it as completed. That's correct. We do not see, we do not have any element with text one item left. Because here if we see, it is zero items left. We have marked off the task as completed. So we can go ahead and use it in our script. Had there been an error with our command, it would have pointed that out as well. So say I change don't see to see. So I have. So it fails saying that it didn't find one item left. And to exit this, we can type exit. Good. Okay. Then you can read an element's value inside a test using grab methods. This should be used with await operator inside async function. So say we need to check that we have zero items left after we have marked off our item as completed. So for that we can have, let me come in this. And we'll have to make this method as async. Okay, let's run. Oh, good. So here we are checking that after marking our item as complete, we should have zero items left. Then, then in some cases, we would like to work with an element held within another element or a window or an iframe, then we can make use of within method. So here, look, all of these items are held within this section with class to do app, right? So we can have, so we have placed all of this inside within the element with class to do app. Okay, so let's run this. So within helps us to narrow down the scope. Okay. Now Playwright allows us to test across all modern browsers. So let's see how we can run our test across Chromium, Firefox and WebKit in parallel. So we'll go to codesub.com.js and here currently we are setting the browser as Chromium. Let's comment this out because we need to run all the three browsers. So instead of this, we'll add. So we have added a multiple section. Basic is the name of our suite. This could have been anything. And then we have our browser array containing all the browsers we would like 
the test to run on okay save this and let's run now instead of typing the command here we can instead add the command here as our test script so here instead of run we are using run multiple followed by the name of the suite which is basic in our case and if you have multiple suites and you would like to run all of them then use hyphen hyphen all instead of this so now to run we'll simply type npm test So look, now we have got three windows, one for each browser. That's good, right? And our test ran in parallel. Excellent. Now, um, if you would like to emulate a device, then we can add in the playwright options, we'll add, so we'll emulate iPhone 6. Oh, so we haven't defined devices. We need to do that. This should work fine now. So this is iPhone 6. Excellent. All right. Now, another important thing is to have a nice report after our test execution. So let's add a lure report. So you need to install a lure command line using this command. This will install a lure command line globally. I already have it installed. So now, after you have installed it, in your plugin section, we'll add this. And now, we'll run our test. Okay. And now, to open a your report, use a your serve. That's a beautiful audio report. Look. Alright, so I hope you enjoyed working with CodeCept.js.